Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now. There's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. You're going to do a video. I hope you find it to be an absolute blessing. Going to look at how much Jesus Christ loves us. I mean, loved by Jesus. Great amounts of love. And we're going to ask this question at the end. Ask yourself this question after seeing these verses. If you're not saved, you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is your gospel. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning of the video. where you're, And the key here is your past, present, future sins being forgiven by the blood atonement where Jesus died on the cross for the remission and forgiveness of all of your sins. And it's a heart belief, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it's not a work, so it's any man can boast. So let's take a look at Christ died for the ungodly, and it also will be Christ died for the weak. That will be found at Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. Please follow along in your KJV Bible. And the Bible reads at verse 6, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. So he came to die for the ungodly. Who are those? That's all of mankind, because no, no one lives up to God's standards. And he died for the weak. Christ came seeking sinners, and Christ came to save those same sinners at, at Luke 19, verse 10. And the Bible reads at Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So he came for the sinners, and he came to save them. The lost people are those that are, that are damned to hell. Christ died for transgressors. And this is back in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah. And we'll go to chapter 53, a very famous chapter in Isaiah. And we're going to go verses 3. Through eight. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Verse 4, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten to God, and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Verse six, all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That was on Jesus. Verse seven, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter 
and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Verse 8, he was taken from prison and, and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So he died for the transgressors. He died for all humanity. He took on he took on our iniquities and our sins. Christ died for murderers and the worst sinners possible. Yes, he even died for them. Yes, those people can get saved, although none of us deserve it. One sin, uh, any of the sins you can think of, is enough to fall short of the glory of God, and, to, and, and we need forgiveness. First Timothy is where we're going to go, and we will go to First Timothy verse, and verses 13. In chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, and the Bible reads, Who was before a blasphemer and a, persecu a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is the faithful saving, saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Timothy called him chief, or the, or the biggest sinner ever. So this is, an, this is a prophet of God saying that he is the biggest sinner ever. So therefore, murderers and other sinners would be less than him. And, we, and Christ died for all of us. Christ died for his enemies. Yeah, so not even those that be, become, he died for all. The salvation is available to all. Let's look at it. Romans chapter 5, and we're going to go to verse 10. And the Bible reads at verse 10, For if we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He gave up his life. He died for his enemies. When you, before you're saved, you're an enemy. You're an enemy of, of God. And you need the salvation of Jesus Christ and the blood. Get saved today by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the last question on the board. Do you know anyone who loves you this much? After seeing this and who Jesus died for, I know no one who loves man. And that means all men, no matter how bad they are, this much. God bless. Leave your prayer requests below. If you need them, we will pray for you here on this channel. Have a great day.